Hi and welcome to the Learn to Fish DVD 2. My name's Erin McNaught and I'll be travelling with you as we embark on some great fishing around Australia, utilising some talented young people, learning a little bit more about my favourite outdoor pastime. Well, as you can guess, I just love fishing and I thank the Australian Fishing Trade Association for putting all this together, plus the project funding by the Australian Government Recreational Fishing Community Grants Program. Well, I just can't wait to get started. I've got my rod and reel, but before we go fishing, we should always remember to tell someone where we're going and what time we'll return. So, while I'm doing that, let's see what Scott, Becky and Cohen are up to on the water. G'day, I'm Scott Amon from Modern Fishing Magazine. I'm fishing with my kids. Offshore, we're fishing soft plastics here and we've cast a soft plastic lure into some bait schools that have been working the top of a reef. Looks like Cohen has got a snapper here. We're guessing the way it's bumping. We'll know very shortly. What I will do is grab the net very quickly. been doing here is casting our soft plastic lures ahead of the drifting boat. There's a big reef system down here and there's bait fish mingling around on top so we're casting our plastics and drifting down into them allowing them to sink and working them back. This fish about halfway down has just walloped this soft plastic and Becky's really having to do some hard work here and she's just working that fish. She doesn't want the line to go slack. When the fish is taking lines she keeps a good bend in the rod allows it to take line and when she can gain line she'll pull and pump down nice and slow just drift him in oh what a fish becko nice and gentle step back a little bit darling oh and he's in the net oh look at that that is a snapper Woo. doesn't matter how many snapper you catch it's always exciting, and a big red like that. <laughs> Sorry about your foot, darling. Really puts a smile on anyone's face. Now, that simple tackle, that's just a seven foot spin rod loaded with about 20 pound braid, so 10 kilo-ish braid. We've got a fluorocarbon leader there of about the same breaking strain. You can see the jig head and it's got great big teeth marks in it. See the jig head? The plastic has disappeared. He's mangled that. This is just an amazing fish. That's so well done, darling. So there you have it. Simple soft plastic, probably $2 worth of lure and a fish of a lifetime. That's your best snapper by a country mile, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Really nice fish, darling. We're gonna plonk this fish back in the water and even have a crack at another fish, all right? Yeah. Let's go. There's a whole host of ways that you can fish soft plastic lures. And the way that you fish them is very much dictated by the environment you're fishing in. What we're doing here is we're on a shallow offshore reef. And we're positioning the boat using our sonar and our GPS up current and up wind of the structure that we want to fish. We're all fishing out one side of the boat and we're casting ahead of our drift, so we're drifting down onto our lures and bringing them in towards the boat. And the way that we work these lures, and again it does vary depending on where you're fishing and who's fishing, when we cast them out, we allow them to sink. I usually put the reel in gear because we quite often, snapper, believe it or not, will feed right up on the surface. And so are kingfish and a lot of other pelagic fish. So we allow it to sink in gear, and we watch the line. We don't want too much of a belly in that line or we'll lose contact with the lure. So we try and maintain a little bit of contact with the lure, just a very loose belly in the line, not a big one. And we watch the line. That's actually a bite indicator for us. It'll see, as well as feeling it, we'll see it. So we allow that to sink. We try and judge, and it changes on the day depending on how much wind and how much current. We try and judge how far that lure is gonna drop. We want it to drop down towards the bottom 
when it get to, gets towards the bottom, we start a series of little jigs like that. And different lures, we work different ways. Once you start flicking that rod tip, they dart and swim beautifully in the water there, and they look just like a wounded bait fish. A lot of people cast incorrectly. And it's pretty close quarters here. There's three of us casting. It really is just a pendulum type thing. We pull the bail arm back on the thread line reel, and you'll notice it's not a big swing of my whole body. It's straight back, and I flick it out. I get that bit of whip in the tip of the rod, and it just sends that lure. With the wind at your back, you can cast the lure a long way. So keep your casting simple. You know then you're not going to hook someone up behind you or anything like that. You're straight back, straight forward, and allow that lure to sink. But don't forget, all the way through the water column, you can expect a strike, whether you're fishing for snapper, kingfish, or anything else on soft plastic. How's that, mate? Very good. <laughs> That very hard. Hit it hard. It's bumping like a snapper, but it's not going like Beck's big truck of a thing. Is it? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. There it goes. <laughs> right, oh, mate. It's going under the boat. Keep your rod tip low and bring him right round this way, Cohen. That's a great example of what you need to do if the fish goes under the boat. Drop that rod tip right down the water because there's a propeller and everything under here. Yep. And it's too hard to go around the front when it's a bit blowy like this. Oh. And that was perfect, mate. Now what? <laughs> Oh, Are you a happy chappy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's some cracking oh. big reds on this ground, isn't it? Oh. And again, just like Becky, Cohen's done a fair bit of fishing, thankfully. And you notice he doesn't let the line go slack, because if the line goes slack, particularly with braided line like we're using here with no stretch, the hook, with a little bit of loose line, the hook can pop out if the fish isn't that well hooked. So we like to keep tight to the fish, and Cohen's doing a great job here of staying tight to the fish, even through those head shakes. When you hear the clicking on the reel, that's the fish taking line. Cohen allows the fish to take line with a bend in the rod and the rod tiring the fish. And when the opportunity arises and he can take a bit of line, he'll go down as he takes line and lift up. We'll show you how to net these fish. Cohen will when the fish gets in close to the boat, he'll have to step back and allow me to get in underneath him. And you don't chase the fish with the net. You swim the fish into the net. We'll show you how to do that. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Oh, yes! See how he swam that fish into the net? <laughs> beautiful. Mate, that is an absolutely gorgeous snapper. Oh, oh yes. Nice fish, mate. <laughs> These snapper, I reckon, are feasting on those bait fish that we, we're seeing working on the surface. Yeah. Becky's snapper was right up near the surface. A lot of people think they're just bottom feeding fish, but they're not. They're more a mid-water fish, and they'll come right up, even in 20, 30 metres of water, they'll come right up to four metres of water if that's where the food source is. Two snapper caught at different levels in the water column. Becky's right up high. This one down near the bottom. So a great example, that's why plastics are so good. You can fish them at any level in the water column from right up at the top to right down at the bottom and bounce them along the bottom. So one of the great beauties of fishing plastics, isn't it? You can fish that yeah. entire water column. All right, we'll get this fish unhooked and back in the drink. Yeah. Well done, boy. <laughs> See ya, big fella. Oh. oh, yeah, he's away. 